Okay, in this practical we're going to look at the speed of a wave. And well, the first thing we're going to look at is the speed of a wave that we're going to get moving down this slinky spring. So hopefully you can see it. If we move one end quite quickly, like this, then hopefully you'll be able to see that a wave goes from one end of the spring all the way down to the other end. It reflects off that end and comes back. And we could do calculations to work out the speed of that wave, but what we're going to try and do is this. If we continuously move the one end like this, then what you end up seeing, if I can just get it right, there we go, you end up seeing what looks like you've got a wave, but it seems to be stuck in, it's stuck in one place, and we'd actually call that a stationary wave. But what's actually happened is that a wave is going from one end to the other, and it's bouncing back and then going backwards and forwards, or I've lost it, like that, okay, so it's bouncing backwards and forwards. So you just see the one pattern. And it's it's harder to think how we'd work out the speed of this, but we can still do it. Because if you think about the equation that you know, you know the equation which is speed equals frequency times wavelength, and we could measure the wavelength of this wave, okay, and that'd be the distance between the two hands that you can probably see. And then we could work out the frequency by looking at how often I am shaking the end and how many times per second I'm actually moving this would be the frequency and we could go frequency times wavelength will give us the speed but there's a better way of doing this which we'll now have a look at so different apparatus but same principle we've now got a piece of string so you've got this piece of spring a uh, piece of string not spring anymore piece of string and we've got on the end of it a mass and I'm just going to hang this mass over a pulley and what that will do that will cause the piece of string to go quite tight so you can know that's being held and this is what we're going to make our waves go down backwards and forwards along the piece of string. So we've tied off the string at this end and we've got something to move because I was getting tired so rather than somebody moving their arm up and down we're going to use something called a vibration generator and that's this probably looks at a circular silver thing here that's going to move up and down and make this, this string move and waves go up and down it. Okay, now, uh, we need something to make that move and that's what this is called. This is called a signal generator and we can control how fast it moves up and down. And remember the posh word for how fast something moves up and down is how many times a second it does a complete oscillation or a complete wave and that is the frequency. So we can control the frequency of this moving up and down which is the frequency of the wave going up and down the string and we can measure the wavelength, hopefully we're going to see a wave like you did on the spring and you might just be able to see there's a tape measure and we'll be able to measure the wavelength and then using the formula that you've done in class that speed is frequency times wavelength we should be able to work out the speed of waves going up and down this string so if we start it going uh, like that okay, and I'll start quite slow so this is equivalent to me before when you're just moving, the, moving it up and down, sort of uh, not looking for any particular pattern yet. There's reflection backwards and forwards going on, but we can't see an actual wave to measure. So if I increase it, got a few things rattling, and I'm going to increase it until hopefully you'll be able to see. I think about there. You should be able to see, you might not see it on camera, but we'll see, you've got a one half the wave here and one half the wave there. Now I know it looks as though uh, it's sort of up and down at the same time, but remember this is going very fast, so all you're just seeing is a blur as it moves between the two positions. So when it's up on this side, it'll be down on this side. Oh, it's just gone. Let's get it back. So when it's up on this side, it'll be down on this side, and when it's down on this side, it'll be up on that side. There might be some uh, film that we've done with the uh, stroboscope that'll help you. Look at that. Okay, so if we take some measurements, we've got a frequency. This is a frequency of about 64. And the wavelength, if I just read off, the length of one wave is about... 1.07 meters so if I hold that so you can see what I'm doing so we've got speed is frequency times wavelength so the frequency in Hertz is 64 and the wavelength in meters is 1.07 okay and that gives us a speed if you multiply those of about two 
68.5 meters per second. Okay, we'll just set it up to do another one in a second. Hold on. Okay, so if we repeat that, but this time, rather than having it so you can see, you might not be able to see, we'll see, rather than you, you've been able to see one wave where it went all the way up and then all the way down, we're now going to try and change the frequency on here. So instead of getting one complete wave, we'll aim at getting two waves. So all the way up, all the way down, all the way up and all the way down. Now you might struggle to see this on the film, but let's see. Okay, this is, this is kind of where we were before. You might see all the way up, all the way down. But now, if we increase the frequency, Okay, now I think that's possibly about as good as we're going to get. So you might be able to see all the way up, all the way down, that's one way, all the way up, all the way down, that's two waves. Okay, so if I just, if you remember we've got two waves in a distance of, this is still about 107. So if we just turn this up so we can hear. Okay, so we had 107 centimeters so we've got 107 centimeters is actually two waves so that's not really any good because we want the wavelength so I need to halve that if 107 centimeters is two waves then one wave is going to be 53 centimeters but I'm going to rub that out again because we need to be in meters so the wavelength isn't 53 centimeters I'm just going to change that and say the wavelength is 0.53 meters. Now I didn't make a note of the frequency, let's have another look at it. So the frequency is about 125 hertz. So if we do this again and we'll see what happens. So we've got 125 25 times 0.53 and we've got an answer of 66.25 so 66 0.25 meters per second and just down the corner our previous answer was 68.5 now you can see I know they're not exactly the same but this velocity or this speed of the waves is very similar to what we had before because if you remember before what we've done we've halved the wavelength here this wavelength was before was 1.06 meters and by halving the wavelength we've doubled the frequency or thereabouts Okay, so which means our product of frequency times wavelength has given us the same speed on that wave.